Hey everyone, it's Trina Bellamide, and today I'd like to talk about something that I saw on Facebook a couple of days ago. It was a post by the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines. Hello to everyone from IPO. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for posting what you posted because it sparked a conversation among songwriters, publishers, and music users who had some very strong reactions about their post. So I'm going to read to you what was posted. Did you know that covering a song is illegal without a license and uploading it on the internet is another violation of copyright? So basically the whole post was about music usage on the internet. And I know it's a very interesting topic, so that's what we're going to talk about right now. But before we do that, I'd like to invite you all to subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button below and you will get notified whenever I upload new content. And when we get this conversation going about intellectual property and music usage on the internet, you'll be notified about it. What I'm going to do is read off of the post and try to answer some questions that were there. And I know that this video won't answer everything, but at least we can get the conversation started. Okay. In that post, the IPO further says, recording the video is a violation of the author's reproduction rights and streaming it online is a violation of the author's right of communication to the public. So basically they were talking about two rights. Reproduction rights, which is also known as mechanical rights, and communication to the public, which is like the digital version of public performance. So I know it's a lot to take in, but let me try to take you through it. Reproduction rights has to do with having a recording and putting it out there and sharing it. Communication to the public or performance has to do with the mere fact that a music is played in public or in places where it is monetized. Okay, first of all, we need to understand that the copyright law provides protection for the rights holders of any song that is out there. The rights holders are usually the songwriters or the publishers. So since they hold the rights to these songs, they get to make the decision on how a song is going to be used, whether it's going to be reproduced into copies, digital or whatever, or if it's going to be performed. Those decisions can be made only by the people that hold the rights to those songs. Nobody else can make decisions for them. So we need to be clear about that. That is the first step in understanding everything. So what I'm going to do is I'll read it off of the thread and there are some questions posted there and maybe in the process we'll get to understand this topic a little better. At this point, I want to thank the IPO for posting what they posted and for getting people interested in this topic. And also a special shout out to Larry Wayne. Um, he had some questions on thread and I promised him I would make a video to answer his questions. So Larry, here we go. Do live bands performing in resto bars follow this? Because I'm pretty sure bar owners wouldn't shoulder that expense of paying for songs performed. But if they do, then kudos to them. Well, you can say kudos to them indeed because there is such a thing as a PRO or a performance rights organization. Every country has it. In the Philippines, it's PhilScat, the Filipino Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. And in other countries, they all have their own. There's ASCAP in the US, there's APRA in Australia, there's CASH in uh, Hong Kong, there's JazzRack in Japan. Every country has their own PRO. So what a PRO does is collect performance royalties from all these establishments that play music and distribute that to the composers and publishers who own the rights to the songs. So you might be surprised to know that all these bars are actually paying um, performance royalties to composers. Maybe it's a surprise for you to know that all these business establishments actually do secure a license to play songs in their places of business and they pay a fee, usually it's an annual fee, and those royalties do go to songwriters and publishers for the use of their works. Now to answer your question, it's not the performers that will pay for the use of those songs. 
It's actually the bar owner. They pay the PRO and the PRO pays the songwriters and publishers. Another question Larry was asking, and I'm sure this is on the mind of most music users as well, if an audience records and uploads a performance on social media platform, is that person liable? Because if they are, then a warning should be given prior to a performance. And along with that, I'll read another question that's kind of connected to that. Um, there are actually a lot more scenarios to be raised, but my point is, the law specified is the law specified is either very vague or very encompassing that it restricts anyone from enjoying music. So this seems to be like um, the impression of a lot of people. Like, isn't the copyright law a bit restrictive in terms of allowing people to enjoy music? So here's what I'm gonna say: it doesn't restrict people from enjoying it because music is about enjoying listening to it. So as a consumer, when you listen to a song, when you hum the song, you sing it to yourself, and you dance to it, that is how you enjoy music. Now, making a recording or a recorded copy of it and sharing it with other people, that is already a different matter. The law still allows you to enjoy music, just not make copies of it for sharing because that right is reserved for the rights holders. So, should you ask permission to post anything on YouTube? Technically, yes, you need to seek permission from the rights holder. That is always the safest thing to do. If you don't ask permission, then you run the risk of getting flagged, or getting a copyright strike. There is always that risk. People who do it without asking permission are perhaps willing to run that risk. So it's entirely up to them. But the proper thing to do is ask permission from the rights holder. Always, if you're gonna do a cover version, seek out the songwriter or the publisher and ask permission. If you don't, well, you can go ahead and post it, but be prepared for the consequences. So guys, I know it's a lot to take. Just today we just talked about two things, mechanical, or reproduction rights and performance or communication to the public. I know that this video is just like a starting point to get a conversation going. I want to hear your questions and your comments. Please post them in the comment section below. Let's get a conversation going. If you're a songwriter or publisher, I want to hear what you have to say about this. And if you are a music user and you're worried about how you're using music and you want to know more things, please ask your questions in the comments section below. And if you think this video is going to be helpful to somebody that you know, please feel free to share it. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And also check out my other videos that I posted in the past. Um, I would love to hear from you guys. I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching this video.